We are in Zagreb for two days, March 7th and 8th, participating in the Trade and Receivable Finance Summit organized by FCI for the Central Eastern Europe region. Yesterday, during the panel discussion that I moderated, we discussed the digitalization of the receivable finance industry and the future digitalization, meaning that we do not discuss whether it is worth digitalized processes, especially for micro and SME customers, but we do discuss what are the processes and what actually the products will be needed and required by the customers in the future. I think the future is definitely digital. The only thing is whether there is uh, the nearest future, maybe for somebody it's a reality already, or maybe for somebody it will be a more distant one, but definitely, definitely uh, we all go to the, to the digitalization. I think uh, we don't need to discuss why. If to short, maybe if just to shortly mention that, of course, because of the costs, because digitalizations give the opportunity to cover the segments of the customers that are not covered at the moment by the traditional uh, factoring process, which is mainly uh, uh, micro center and SME customers. Uh, and of course, mitigation of, of risks and, uh, and, and frauds here. And I think the only discussion that we can have on the digitalization is not what, not what to have it, but actually which processes and which products uh, will be needed in the future with digital one and which customers, uh, factoring companies will be serving in the future. So um, if to start from a status quo in the C region, what we are analyzing also at SME Banking Club every year, uh, having uh, around uh, 80 uh, factoring companies here in the Central Eastern Europe region, we have 22 that implemented fully or partially digital processes for um, factoring or invoice fi receivable finance for small and medium businesses. So for the 60 uh, of them, the digital journey is, uh, is the future. The new generation of, ent of entrepreneurs as, uh, is a digital uh, native, I would say. Um, we have the trend of the increasing number of digital nomads, so the entrepreneurs working remotely from different parts of the world, not attached to a residential address, a mortgage or any property at all. The digitalization is uh, becoming our um, everyday life. So this will definitely lead to the demand of the new digital products. Uh, from the receivable finance industry. Simon, you are responsible for the Central Eastern Europe at uh, Raiffeisen Factor Bank. Sure. So, um, how do you see the development on factoring and maybe in general receivable finance in the region in the upcoming several years? Um, well, it's a difficult question because the sea is not just one, one, one country. It's, it's about three regions how we look at them. Of course, there is the CIS region, which is right now under a lot of stress, uh, and there the development is very questionable how it will develop. But of course, there is the Central European ones, which are, let's say, with Poland especially being the case, almost already more developed than, than, than Germany, uh, mm -hmm. especially when it comes to the competition. Uh, on the other hand, Czech is lagging a bit behind. Um, it's probably also due to the size of the market. And Slovakia and Hungary right, right behind Czech Republic. So these, these four markets, should I say, or three markets, more central ones, they're already close to what, uh, what the DAH region is, mm -hmm. is providing. There is still some, some need, of course, again, smaller markets, so they need a bit of a push, but very close to what, what is happening in, 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 in the DAH or, or Western Europe, so to say. Now, what is happening there, I have to say, there's a lot of supply chain finance already, right? So payables, finance mm -hmm. is coming in, asset-based lending, which is slowly spreading from uh, yeah, the Anglo-Saxon countries, uh, mm -hmm. uh, UK, uh, uh, Netherlands, and, and of course Germany are already taking part in this. And of course, this is slowly going in, into that direction. The other, the third region, is, is the South, Southeast Europe, which is again a bit divided on the Balkan regions or, or Western Balkans which is lagging behind you to it's, it's not membership in Europe and that mm -hmm. kind of brings with it the, the issue of, of no credit insurance or uh, less access to credit insurance. 
While on the other hand you have Romania, Bulgaria, uh, which are more developed, uh, of course, especially Romania, which has a lot of these high-tech, uh, um, fintech uh, uh, initiatives which are happening. And so we're kind of seeing the spread from the south, uh, which is with fintech, uh, and, and from the west, which is with supply chain finance again. Mm -hmm. So probably this is where we'll see the, 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 the future coming. Mm -hmm. A bit different, but again, the Balkans, as mentioned, I forgot to mention that. The Balkans do have an issue that they are lagging behind, I mean, especially uh, Albania, uh, Macedonia, uh, um, Kosovo, uh, Kosovo maybe not as much, it's more about uh, Bosnia also is lagging mm -hmm. behind. Serbia quite nicely developed, and Croatia, of course, is part of the European mm -hmm. Union, already having a, mm -hmm. a stronger push towards, mm -hmm. towards the, let's say, the, the normality of Western, Western Europe. Serbia, you represent uh, Factory Fintech operating in Latvia and Poland. So, and you represent actually this the most innovative part of the factoring or receivable finance industry. Please tell us what do you consider as uh, innovations in your industry? Okay, I, I can say that right now many of uh, factoring companies in our area concentrate mostly like on, on development of product of, on software mm -hmm. and forgetting that the most important part of fintech is actually the product itself and the process how quickly you can serve the customer how you can uh, optimize the process to make it uh, seamless and uh, quick as possible for the customer and mm -hmm. for that uh, no I, I think the innovation it should be like returning back to the essence of our business and our business is not software yeah, software development and when um, companies like our like type of companies like the, this invest a hundred of thousand euro or maybe even more in development of soft and forgetting about what's the essence of the business and what they want to achieve that's the problem and I think this is important for like innovation to, to get back to this to, mm -hmm. to reality of course to use uh, all those services and uh, I believe that also outsourcing of services is also very important. Like we, for example, use external scoring, external uh, customer uh, identification, electronic signature. So what is not our core business, we outsource. And the rest, you know, like, then we have time uh, and resources to develop the core, mm -hmm. like decision-making process and the whole uh, process. Mm -hmm.